I looked at President Barack Obama, who had a Supreme Court pick wow. that he was legally supposed to replace Scalia. Got that? I mean, this was his duty and right as President of the United States to put a person on the Supreme Court. He, he I don't. What? Well, how did that? How? How in the I, hell it's, did it's, that not happen? Because well, we would have done it if it was in the House, but we didn't have it. The Senate had it, mm-hmm. and the Senate blocked it because they had the majority. Had we had, this is why elections are important. This is why sometimes even if you've got a Democrat that does not have the exact persuasion as you want, they're more important than a Republican because in those scenarios, you can get those things done. If we had the majority in the Senate, he would have gotten through. The Senate filibustered and blocked it. He could have just put executive order and put somebody on it. He could not, not in the Supreme Court. Recess appointment, right? Couldn't he? Have? He could have done it between the uh, between the uh, the sessions, right? If, could if, have. If, if he did a re- if he had done it, what would have happened? And first of all, he legally could have done it, right? But the guy would not have been there permanently. He was still it doesn't would have matter. Had, he could have done. He it. would have still had to have had an an election. Sure. Uh, you know, no after question. the election, and no, and he would have been replaced. I agree. With and you. we had someone. The goal was, and the objective was to try to get someone on there that would be there permanently. You're, and and the other issue is the other issue that Barack Obama had to deal with, et cetera, because we still got to deal with other Democrats also. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you can push that forward, and it'll be good for the moment, then we lose all of the seats that we had even on the House but side, it speaks to and a, you don't oh, get the majority what? there, and then we don't have well, any power well, whatsoever. It spoke well, well, to a weakness well, to me. Yeah, well, which, I agree with you. I, 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 Congressman, you know, and you know, like you said, I mean, and you know, we love you at, at, at School of Law. You know, you frequently be over there. And, yes, sir. And so you you know better than I do the, the phrase parade of horribles. In other words, these are the things could happen if we do this, if we do this, if we do this. I'm thinking about, and I agree with you, uh, 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 Karen, Barack Obama's politics, you talk about strategy, you talk about tactic. I think Obama is is famously weak. I won't call, I won't call him weak. He's a moderate. He wasn't the kind of guy that's going to go out there and punch somebody in the face. He wasn't going to nominate a black woman to, to the Supreme Court and galvanize every black woman in the country. And so but, but given that, I, I guess I'm going to ask this question, because there's an article in today's New York Times, Nicole Hemmer wrote a, 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 on the iPad page called Polls Won't Change Minds. She said the Republicans, as you said, they don't care. They don't care about majority opinion. They don't care. They're going to run this to the wheels fall off. I guess my question is in terms of tactic and strategy. At what point do we take a risk? In other words, because because clearly McConnell was going to re- he's going to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg if, if Trump wins this election. <laughs> what? And so that it, you know, and many others. But 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 in this case, in this particular case, you can't move anything with the Senate without the Senate. I think what you all did, the first bill that you all passed out of the House with to reform voting rights and everything, it's brilliant. And of course, Mitch McConnell is sitting there and saying, until my hands fall off, you will not pass anything through the Senate. At what point do we say we're willing to take the type of political risk that could actually break this law? So let me let me just say this. What we had was when Barack Obama first got elected. Yes. And the reason why we got health care, et cetera, was because we were in the majority. Agreed. Okay. Absolutely. And then we lost it. Yes. Okay. So then the focus. That's right. So then the focus was how do we regain that majority so Uh that we can get back so that we can do the things that we need to do that we were able to do when he for the first two years. So that then became the game that we had to play and what we had to focus on. Mm -hmm. And so what you see now, even with the Tea Party that you mentioned, the last election, the Republicans and all those Tea Party candidates that they had, we beat them. Yep. No question. That's how we became back in the majority. So there was the a strategic in the we House. We lost seats in the Senate. Well, we, but we, we we had not gained. We were in the minority in the House and the Senate. And the Senate. I, I, I get it. I get it. So the focus was even there. More in the Senate. And we lost in the Senate because at that time, all senators are not up at the same time. Uh-huh. It's rotate. So there was more Democrats that were up for grabs at that time than Republicans, which is just the opposite this time. And what becomes very important, uh, what folks need to look at, in this last election that took place in Kentucky, where McConnell is, right, where it's stone red. But Bevin is a, Bevin is a kind of an outlier, don't you say? He's stone crazy, and well, he still almost won, and he still hasn't conceded. Well, but well, but the Republicans are about to concede that themselves. Okay. And so, if you look at that and look at those numbers, here's a state that. Um, Trump had won by almost 30%. 30 percent. No question. Yeah. No question. So, but, but John Bell the, Edwards may not the, be able to the, hang the, on in the, Louisiana. The, 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 well, we're going to see, but that's a battle. But so we we got these kind of fights Fair that enough. we've got to take place Fair in enough. some of these southern states because we got to flip them. Sure. As well as you know, we've got to make sure. You know, for me, the strategy is also 
winning these seats in the Southwest. Southwest is a key to me. Is it going to be, and Karen, this is so, man, this is it, man. You're getting right down to the thing itself. It, is winning these seats, increasing the majority in the House, and then flipping some Senate seats, is there going to be a battle within the Democratic Party over this question of moderates? Because I'm thinking about Pelosi's strategy, and I'm thinking about the fact that the seats that were picked up in, in the recent congressional election are seats that they're calling conservative Democrats. I'm th I can hear Tom Perez. I can hear Barack Obama saying, okay, now is not the time to embrace this. Because In other words, but when is the time? In other words, as the, getting these, increasing the majority, getting those Senate seats, is there going to be a battle in the Democratic Party to tell people to don't go out there and set Friday anything yet? We got to get the Senate back and we got to get these no. Southwest seats. I'm, I'm asking. I'm, here's, I'm, here's what the deal is. Yes. Is there going to be a battle in the Democratic Party? Yes. <laughs> what do you say? Absolutely. No question. There's no question. It's, we're not monolithic. There's going to be a fight going back and forth, moderates against. That's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? But what the difference is, by having the moderates there, yes, yes. we control the chairs. That's right. And the, So that's what you're really talking about here. <laughs> you control who the chairs are. Yes, sir. And that's where the power is. Yes, sir. And so you let the moderates, I don't care what the moderates, you let the moderates or the conservatives say what they need to say to get reelected. That's okay. Mm. I well, hold on. Chair. Let the operative no, chime no, in what, here. This no, no, saying. it's good. Yeah. Because they cannot win their districts. Wait. The choice, when I say, when I say it's okay, <laughs> when I say it's okay, yes. the choice is to have a moderate or conservative Democrat or a right-wing Republican. Oh, no question. There's no choice okay. between those. Absolutely. And by, by them helping us to be in the majority, it then determines who the Speaker of the Congress is. Mm -hmm. As well as who the chairs of every major committee is, so how do you so that you can make a difference? We can get the, how, how do you flip the Senate? Then? So that's what I said. So the Senate has to be flipped for me. Not you know, well Georgia is starting to look. We should look at the elections before with Georgia and Florida. That looks like those may be opportunities that we could pick up. Sure. Tennessee Texas could be in play. Is in play. North no Carolina Tennessee. can be in play. So no those are the those are the areas of which you need to focus on. So you need someone that's going to have a message, though, mm. that can yeah, win that's what I was gonna, those that's, states. Getting back to Dr. That's Carr's it. point, that's it. this is not going to happen with milk toast. AOC handed that brother, not brother, his ass, and they, the Democratic Party wasn't ready for her. No. They didn't see that me. coming. Listen to me. They didn't see that coming. Listen to me, though. And I'm saying, <laughs> go, to me go, ahead, go ahead. This is your that, state. That was an election. Of Democrat against them, Dem a Democrat's going to win that seat. Absolutely, a Republican but is not going to win that seat. she wasn't a moderate. She wasn't a moderate, and nobody, nobody seat. thought that that was going to happen. And, and, so what, and what me, I'm saying is, let me is, give you another hint on that. Well, let me give you one more hint on that. I think he's let, me right. give, let me give you one more hint on that. Let me ahead. give you one, one more hint on that. Go ahead. No black folk voted for. Were so they voted for him? It's a different movement, and it was a different. It's a different area. This is Wait a minute, though. Wait a minute, though. Is she aligned with Atlanta Omar and the Russia? And uh, no, no, no. these are uh, what also. I'm saying is, and, what I'm and saying Puerto Ricans is, is black too. This is the problem yeah. we have. No, 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 no. Oh my what God. I'm saying is, what you got to look at that district, and what we've got to figure out and work with. Yes, sir. In Queens, she's Bronx and Queens, yeah. and she's on my committee. I try to. We try to work. We oh, try no, to look no at question. certain things no that we work together. No question. No question. But the individuals that made a difference in that seat was white millennials. Okay, but so she was able to reach Got people. It. No, and I get I get what you're okay. saying. Hold and, on. Look at, look and, at, and, and, if you, and if you look at those white millennials yeah. that gentrified the area, okay, and you look at where they live, they're the ones that's buying those $2 million condos because they already got their money. So you're saying that's her, is that her constituency? Because I look at her on something like Deces and Miro yes. with the Dominicans. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, yes. why can't we build a kind of coalition? Come on, I mean, Dr. Adam Carr. Clayton Powell's Come son on. is from the Caribbean. Brother, I mean, his yeah. Spanish group. Brother, you are absolutely right. I'm just asking, what's well, no, the no, solution? No. You're absolutely right, which is why I... As chair of the Queens Democratic Organization, come on, brother. You know, yes. that's and this is what we had fought for inside. Yes, is now I am working very closely with the Latinos in that community. Yes, so that we can build, and we've got to also understand, though, in the Latino community, 
they are not monolithic They're either. Not. No. No. So we've got to figure that out. I'm right. working to get that get so I can Ricans make sure the, the Puerto Ricans, the, people, the Dominicans, the Colombians, the Ecuadorians, yes, the Central yeah. Americans. Yes. We've got to be very strategic. I think strategic. a black man has a stronger position because Dominicans and Puerto Ricans don't really mess with each other like that, right? No. But if it's a black man, you could hit all of them but, folk. And this yeah. is what we're doing. And yeah. we're trying to That's talk right. together. And then we can draw together the, the, the Latinos in the Bronx together with those in Queens, yes. together with the black folks and the Latinos in the Brooklyn, and we can should be having that dialogue and conversation and we can work together. I can talk about the politics in the city of New York of how we can make sure that we really have a voice and strength if we are focused on that and not just be focused on our little individual boroughs, et cetera. Sure. And we are working. I can assure you oh, I have no doubt. working I have, on that I have right no, now. Not only do I have no doubt that you're going to succeed in New York, I guess looking at the broader picture, because I said, yeah, you got to take back the Senate. What does that look like in Texas? What does that look like in Georgia when there shouldn't be a conservative of any stripe elected in Georgia demographically right now? How do you grow that base? Like you said, all these people listening to this show, listening to you, Karen, saying, how, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Right. How, how do you trans? Because New York, you're going to figure New York out. Because John R. Clark, you say this is a multi-ethnic nation. It's not. But how are you going to win back those other places? In Georgia, I tell you to study the Lucy McBath race. Mm. Right. Yeah. And how she won. And, and we nationalized Study her that race. race. Yes, sir. We, and that's do? what we're we, trying to do with the CBC PAC. We're studying that race, uh -huh. and we want to duplicate how, what we did uh, Adwa, there. how did y'all nationalize We nationalized race? that race because so many folks, one, contributed to her campaign. Two, we sent down teams of black women who sat down there and phone banked for her, knocked doors for her, folks who weren't in that district. Three, even at the DNC, we phone banked for her, and I actually put it together. So to your point, one, speaking as the operative in the room, we want to have these substantive conversations about policy. Losers don't legislate, so we have to focus on winning. I'm quoting my good friend Antoine C. right there. Mm. If we can't win, none of this makes any sense. So we can't have these meaningful conversations about policy if we are not focusing on winning. So I have to focus on winning elections. We just got a new sister now who's the political director over uh, at the committee that runs the Senate um, my girlfriend, Jessica Knight Henry, who was at the DNC, she's now the political director over here. As a black woman, she gets it. She understands what it takes to win. She used to be the ED of the CBC PAC. And then, uh, now she's over there and she's in charge of figuring out who can we recruit, who can, and I know the conversation about electability, you know, goes different ways, but who do we have that we can run in Georgia, in these, mm. these you know, battleground states? Who can we run and win? Then we can have a family fight. We can have a family conversation. That's, right. That's fine. <laughs> Once we win, but we can't keep having these conversations about why aren't y'all doing this, why aren't y'all doing that, when we don't have the numbers. Mm. So we can pass legislation right. all day long. The House has been doing a great job. Yes. If you look at the materials, they are passing bills left and right. Yes. The CBC has been passing, pushing things left and right. HBCU funding, not j I mean, like literally there are bills upon bills upon bills that go to the graveyard over in the Senate and won't even get brought forth for a vote. Why? So we have to focus because so, we don't have the numbers. Yeah, no, there. we have to get them. Did Adam Clayton Powell have the numbers? Yes. In the Senate? Did he? Yeah. Did he have the numbers? Yes. Did we he have, as a black man in America? Did he have well, the no. numbers? Yeah, they had Lyndon Johnson on one. That, that, no, but this but is my he was point. The chair of his committee. He, he was, he was able the chair to of his committee. use other people to Good make point. things happen. Even because he even took a back seat. Remember, Johnson got all the Republicans to come sign the civil rights, <laughs> yes. right? <laughs> Adam Clay Powell was instrumental in that. He wasn't there at the table for that photo op That's true. because he understood how to utilize the people. I feel like we just aren't strategizing no, properly. But mm. I want you to recall mm. that when Adam Clayton Powell was there, he was chair of the committee. He wasn't, we weren't in the minority. We had a Democratic president. That's why the big fight, you wanted to make sure that at that time that Nixon did not win. He wanted the Democrat. That was the whole issue because had Nixon been the president, it would have never had passed or things of that nature. We had a Democratic Senate. So, and uh, Johnson was known as the master of the Senate Indeed. because he came from the Senate and he knew how to Southern, swing those right. deals there. And also, there was different kind of ways you could do deals. Okay. Right. Because so, some of the deals that you would do, that they were done then, you would go to jail today. <laughs> no question. If those deals were done today. Quickly. And I keep referencing, if, if I can, just for one quick second. That's true. We just had <laughs> Congressman Cedric Richmond as the chair of the CBC. Even with a Donald Trump, you all were still able to get things done. You were still able to get funding You were for uh, education on the HBCU side and on the K-12 side. So my point is still... 
we have to win. We have to win. We have to make sure that we have okay. our folks in the House right. and in let's, the Senate let's in talk order about for us winning. to have meaning. We got 20 some odd Negroes. No, I'm just playing. That's the, the 16 <laughs> night James Town Joe. You got it. You got I'm it. Sorry. Thank you. Port Comfort. Uh, thank That's you. Just, yes. <laughs> uh, 20 people plus running for president. Based on those those characteristics that you just laid out, with Johnson being able to do this and this one be who I don't know who you're endorsing or who you. I haven't endorsed okay. anyone. No. Who? What characteristics should we be look? Because I'm. I like. Let's take the emotion out of it. I don't really care. I already said this. Whoever's the nominee, I'm gonna vote for them. I Riding said that last hard. time. I don't yep. really give a damn who it is at this yep. point. What are the characteristics that we need to get to the point where we can get some things done? That's a good question. Well, I'm judging just what Aja was said, and I'm trying to make who can win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Because if we nominate somebody you, and they can't win. How do you know who can win? No one thought well, Obama gotta, was going to win. I've Let's gotta, be honest until no, Iowa. But, no one thought he could right. win. Well, so I'm going to look at Iowa, and I'm going to be able to look at those things to determine who do I think can win. That's why I have not made a decision. And once you figure that out, then I'm going to be hold so behind them to try to make that happen. So it was too early then. So we've got to look at it and listen and pay attention. Uh, and Because and, the whole idea is winning. Winning is everything.